Hi members, so as we come up to the end of the year, so we're in mid-November, uh, to give you guys some time to prepare, this is for doctors, owners, office managers, um, this is the perfect time to plan your new year. So as we come up to plan for the new year, we need to get together what your practice goals are, what your team goals are, practice improvement goals are. So if you guys have been following um, the series of what I am uh, instructing to go into the offices, you would have by now been starting your weekly staff meetings. And within your weekly staff meetings, you have your stat sheets, which should be done in Excel so you can carry them over to year to year to year. Right now, my Excel stat sheet goes all the way back to 2019. Why do I keep all of that and why do I do it all week long? Is so now I can look back to see at this point in November, where were we last November and the November before that and before that, are we doing better, the same, worse? So keeping those weekly statistics allows you to go back and view. So we viewed that 2021 was our best year ever. And as we went into 2022 and ended that, it wasn't as good. 23, not as good. So going into 24, we looked back and said, okay, how can we dissect this stat sheet and see where we can do better? Because on my stat sheet, and if you guys want this, you can email me at danielle at directorofdentistry.com. That's D-A-N-Y-E-L at directorofdentistry.com. Um, or you can comment uh, on the Facebook page. Um, I can give you a copy of what the uh, blank skeletal stat sheet is. And ours goes down a bit more of a distance. We get a little bit more detail because over time we found what we needed in order to do better. But you need your weekly collection, production, uh, acceptance rate, uh, canceled treatment, refunds, my total collection. How many new patients did we see this week? How many of those accepted treatment? Uh, referrals, how many referrals did we get from this week and where did those referrals come from? And we have it all laid out and then we have our numbers next to them. So I can look back at each week since the beginning of the year or 2019 and compare this month to there to see where we are. So we decided beginning of 2024 to duplicate everything that was in 2021 and now ending 2024 we're having the best year ever because stats don't lie numbers do not lie so if you keep them and every week you meet with your staff and you go over them and together in a positive way you go over how you can eliminate what didn't work last week and implement how to keep those things that did work in place for the following week. So we are doing better this year than ever because we use our statistic sheets in order to make sure that we're not making changes based on emotions because it didn't feel like people called, didn't feel like people are accepting, doesn't feel like we're getting a whole lot of that collection. You are looking at that stat sheet. So I can give you guys a copy of that stat sheet if you want, and I recommend you plug those in every single week if you can't get your staff together once a week at least once every two weeks um, and find out where you can do that. You're either going to take away an hour of production in the morning before you start, or you're going to take out an hour of production for a two hour lunch block for the whole staff, just to make sure people can end, um, get their stuff together. So you already have an hour block in there. An extra hour is one hour, but you're going to give away one hour per week for a staff meeting to make sure that everybody's on the same page. We're not repeating the same errors. We're aware of our statistics and our goals for the next week so we can keep things going. I guarantee you, they're not gonna be gripe sessions. If you reach out to me and ask me how to help you get the structure for a staffing that is effective, I will be more than happy to do that for you. I can send you a video, I can send you instructions, or we can chat on the phone. Either one, get those in place. It's the only way to plan the best year ever always just keep doing better and better and better the other thing that you should be doing at the end of your year is to get together your reviews so whether you're doing everyone at the end of the year and doing everyone an end of the year review or you're doing them on their anniversary date either one you have to have a structured way to do reviews if not the only thing staff is going to expect during a review is either everything they're not doing right or a raise, one or the other. So I have a very um, structured way that I do these meetings so that all the staff knows what they're doing great at and what they need to be improved on. Uh, and they're also well aware of their compensation. It's not just the hourly wage. You have benefits that you offer to your team and you wanna be able to, to make sure that they understand the dollar value of 
those uh, benefits that you have. So when I do put together, and again, you can email me or you can comment below and I'll send you what I have. Um, but when I meet with each person, I have everything on here as far as all their information, things that they are doing great and things they need to work on. And so it's their name, the date, their position, it's their start date, their start pay, what their current pay is, all the benefits. And as you see on the benefits, there's a dollar amount associated with all the benefits so that I can give their estimated hour annual salary based on benefits plugged into what their hourly wage or salary is. So for us, we have health insurance that what and what that equates to each month, paid holidays, what, uh, what that equates to, excuse me, each year, the two and a half weeks of personal time that we give that amount per year, any other benefits that you allow, like your 401k or any of the other benefits. If you have a, a payroll company like ADP that gives a lot of different values of um, benefits, whether it's life insurance allowance or, or any of a uh, short term, long term disabilities, all that I get plugged in. And that's very important because if you just base this on their hourly wage, of course, they're going to be asking for more money at the time because they don't understand what their total compensation is. I have everything that they, that they need to work on. So I want them to know the things during the year that I have had a difficult time correcting, whether they're, they don't take criticism correctly or positively, or if they're on their phone a lot, showing up a little bit late, a lot of sick time. I go over this and I sit in front of them and say, this is just something that was difficult this year. And this is something I want you to work on. I need you to work on this. Um, and then I go over the things that they're doing well. They sign it, I sign it, it goes into their file. They get a copy. So they understand that these things are not overlooked, that they don't bother me, they do bother me. So I give them this so they can understand what they need to do themselves to get better. Also, we use ADP. And ADP has this wonderful thing that you can print out that's called a total compensation paper. And on this, it gives a little graph of the pay um, of, and what it breaks down to. It gives their base earning. It gives all the additional earnings like overtime, bonus, holiday, sick pay, vacation pay, other earnings, um, things that we have, we bet we provide for them any kind of life insurance, vision, medical, any of that of your benefits that you have on there. Um, what we, what they have given to the government because even though they gave it to the government, you still gave it to them and it gives them their total compensation. Why is this important? Because the base earnings for this person is $42,533. After you work in all the benefits that you give your employer, your employee, the total compensation is $61,301. Big difference there. They need to see that. If not, they're only going to focus on the hourly wage. So if your payroll company does not have one, you can ask your accountant to get that ready. You can have it put together yourself on some kind of a spreadsheet, either one. Now, I give raises based on performance. I don't give raises every year just to give raises every year. If the employee ha has performed in a way that they're taking on increased responsibility, they're bringing a, a, a very nice energy to the practice, they're doing exceptional with patients, their skill level has been improving, yes, give them a raise. Don't ever wait for them to come to you. Give them a raise if they are deserving of a raise. But you don't just give a raise to give a raise. I've had people in my office for four years and never gave a raise because it's okay. I mean, I don't want them to go. They're doing just their job, but they're not going above and beyond. So if they decide they're going to leave because well, I'm not giving them more money, that's fine because they're not giving any more back to us. They're doing their base salary. That's it. Fine. That's all they're going to get. But if they're learning and knowledge and growing and just becoming great, of course, I don't want that person to come to me and say, Hey, cause it's, it's a bit uncomfortable and ask to me if they're, if a really, really good person is going to ask, I waited too long. I don't want to wait that long because some people won't ask. They'll just leave. Um, if I, am not giving them a raise and they ask for one during the review, what I have them do is I have them fill out a paper for me that um, tells me, okay, um, if you feel like that uh, you are eligible for an increase, I need you to tell me why. So I need you to give me a form. We call them CSWs. It's a request form of the information and, and what it is that you want, why you feel that you know, this raise should come into place um, and then give me what that solution is. So they give me the um, situation, they give me the data, and they give me the solution. So that way they have to put together a request and really think, 
are they deserving of a raise? Should they be giving a raise? So it's not just, hey, I started at this and I'm still making this. That's not deserving of a raise. What are you doing more to bring to the team and bring to the patients and bring to the doctor and bring to the practice that is that that does justify an increase? Let me know. Before I sit down with the team and do this, two weeks prior to, I send them some homework um, because Again, I want it to be self-reflecting. I want them to come and not be demanding of, of a raise. I want them to really self-reflect before they can ask for that. So they have to do a self-evaluation prior to the review and they just fill it out. This is two pages and it has information like, how do you feel your coworkers view you, your dedication to the practice, your teamwork, outlook on the practice, the seriousness of your job, your quality of work, how do you use your downtime, are you socializing, checking your phone, hiding, um, or are you doing things productive to help the other team members? Um, which points above do you feel like you could improve on? Are you proud of your quality of work? If not, uh, what, what do you feel you need to work on and improve? Do you feel you work your, to your best abilities? Um, do you exert the highest quality of work possible? If not, why not? Um, do you feel that you are a good example of what every staff member should be in the office? If so, what are those? If not, why? What are problems that are occurring in your area that, that you need to work on? List all. What are changes do you feel you need to make in your personal life to improve the quality of, of the work in your office, in our office? Because some people are calling in because of, you know, they can't get the kids to work or they don't have good transportation or whatever, that little bit of self-reflection reflection of what they can do to improve. Um, so... It goes on. There's more and more in there and it gets deeper and deeper because I really want them to self-reflect. And I also give them a peer review sheet um, that actually, you know, asks a few questions as well. So again, I need them to come reflecting on themselves, not coming thinking, okay, it's time for me to get more money when maybe they haven't thought about that. So if I do feel like as a manager, if I do feel like someone is eligible for an increase, I will do a request for staff increase to my doctor and give them the information of why I feel along with the evaluations, along with the review, with everything so that the doctor can have everything that they need uh, in order to approve or disapprove that raise. So as we come up to the end of the year, you want your next year to be better than ever. Let me know if you need a, a sample stat sheet that you can put in Excel, plug in numbers every week. You need every week in order to know where you are each week. Um, and so you can get the total for the month, the total for the year, start doing that this upcoming year. Just create it, plug it in and get those plugged in every single week. It takes me, it takes me, gosh, probably 30 minutes to do that stat sheet, but I need to do it in order to create my staff meeting because that gives me an idea of what we need to talk about this week. So I do, I plug in my numbers for my stat sheet. I create my agenda for my staff meeting. We do that every single week until the end of the year. If you want to copy that, let me know. Um, if you need any help on that, let me know. I do virtual training with office managers, departments, whole teams, doctors, any of them. And I can also come to your office and I can work with you in your office. Um, if you want any examples of these um, end of year reviews or the self evaluation sheets or any of that, I can give you my copies as well. Again, just email me or comment on, on the Facebook page, either one. I'm here to help you. I want to help you make the best year ever. You guys have a great day.